again and welcome to our series of training videos on soil health. In this video, we will focus on soil management practices that enhance soil functions such as nutrient availability, water retention and biological activity in the soil that will contribute to crop productivity. The first step is calculating the amount of nutrients present in the soil. Secondly, determine the amount of nutrients needed by the crop. Then consider all the potential sources of nutrients, which will then result in a selection of either applying manures or compost and applying inorganic fertilizers, for example, NPK. Once you've received your soil test results, Compare them with the appropriate fertilizer requirements recommended. Identify the nutrient requirements since each crop requires varying levels of available phosphorus and potassium to optimize yield. Then calculate how much fertilizer is needed to be applied. And finally, determine how much fertilizer the farmer needs to buy. Before applying any organic fertilizer, it is important to determine the nutrient levels of NPK already present in the soil. That will determine the exact amount of fertilizer to be applied since too much either burns the plant or lead to its death. We have discussed the application of man-made chemical fertilizers. However, these cost money and do not improve the structure, water retention, nor biological activity of the soil. While the addition of fertilizers is often required, the volume of fertilizer can be reduced and the availability of nutrients to the plant can be enhanced by good farming practices such as crop rotation, cover cropping, and adding organic matter and compost. Crop rotation is the process of growing different types of crops in sequence in the same land area in a season or in different seasons. Rotating of crops can help in reducing soil erosion and increase soil fertility and crop yield. With crop rotation, a crop that depletes the soil of one kind of nutrient is followed during the growing season by a different crop that returns that nutrient to the soil or draws a different ratio of other nutrients. Diversity is beneficial for several reasons. Each plant contributes a unique root structure and type of residue to the soil. A diversity of soil organisms can help reduce pest population and several cultural practices can help reduce weed and disease pressures. Intercropping is the growing of two or more crops at the same time on the same field which is our traditional farming systems. Planting more than one crop will allow the crops to grow and work together on the same piece of land. This helps to improve soil fertility and it also increases crop yield. Land is utilized well by both the crops which are otherwise not used by a single crop. It is important to make sure that the plants do not compete with each other for space, sunlight, water and nutrients in your cropping system. Cover crops are planted for ground cover or green manure between plants harvested for food, fiber and fuel. Ground can be covered by leaving crop residue on the surface or by planting cover crops. In addition to ground cover, living cover crops provide additional organic matter and continuous cover and food for soil organisms. Soil organic matter is a key factor affecting biological activity in soils. It is the carbon source of many organisms, including microbiota. 
Microbial activity is greatly increased by incorporating fresh organic residues, such as green manure or crop residues into the soil which can be easily mineralized by microbes. Whether your soil is naturally high or low in organic matter, adding new organic matter every year is perhaps the most important way to improve and maintain soil fertility. Regular additions of organic matter improves water infiltration, decreases evaporation and increases water holding capacity. Practices that increase organic matter include leaving crop residues in the field, choosing crop rotation that include high residual plants, growing cover crops, applying manure or compost using low or no tillage systems, growing perennial forage crops and mulching, and composting. That concludes our series of training videos on soil health and productivity. We have discussed the different soil properties which determine and define the ability of soil to be productive. Every living ecosystem relies on plants and plants rely heavily on nutrients provided by soils. Therefore, ample knowledge of diagnostic procedures is paramount in managing nutrient deficiencies. This can successfully be achieved by taking proper soil management practices which will improve soil health and promote healthier plants, animals and humans. <laughs>